A senior Ukrainian military official played a key role in sabotaging the Nord Stream gas pipelines last year, according to an investigation by two international newspapers. The pipelines, which transported natural gas from Russia to Germany, were damaged in a series of underwater bombings last year, sparking multiple investigations and resulting in both Russia and Ukraine pointing the finger at each other. The Washington Post and the German outlet Der Spiegel said in a joint investigation published Saturday that Roman Chervinsky, 48, a colonel who served in Ukraine's special operations forces, was the coordinator of the operation. The investigation provides the most direct evidence yet linking Ukraine to the sabotage. Chervinsky did not plan the operation or act alone, but he managed the logistics support for a six-person team that traveled in a sailboat that they'd rented using fake identities and used deep-sea diving equipment to place explosive charges on the pipelines, the Washington Post said. The paper's investigation is based on interviews with Ukrainian officials, other European officials, and other people with inside knowledge of the operation speaking anonymously. The colonel has deep ties to Ukraine intelligence services and took orders from the country's top general, Valery Zaluzhny, the paper reported. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky has long denied his country's involvement in the attacks, which resulted in massive gas leaks and strained diplomatic relations between Ukraine and Western countries. But the Post reported that Zelensky would not have known about the Nord Stream operation and that those involved reported to Zaluzhny. This conclusion is based on intelligence reporting obtained by the CIA through the accused Pentagon leaker Jack Teixeira. Chervinsky denied his role in the attacks in a statement to the papers through his lawyer. All speculations about my involvement in the attack on Nord Stream are being spread by Russian propaganda without any basis. Chervinsky is currently being held in a Kiev jail over a plot to lure a Russian pilot to defect to Ukraine last year. He's accused of inadvertently revealing a Ukrainian airfield's coordinates while carrying out his plot, which led to a Russian rocket attack. The blasts in September last year damaged three of the four pipelines that make up Nord Stream 1 and Nord Stream 2. Ukraine had long said the pipelines would let Russia circumvent Ukrainian pipes, leading to a loss of transit revenue for Kyiv. The pipelines were not operational at the time of the attack due to disputes between Russia and the European Union. Latvia's president says Russia is planning for a long war in Ukraine, and he has a message for countries wavering on continuing military support to Kyiv. Keep supplying arms, or the Ukrainians will lose, and Russia will have a green light for threatening others in the future. Edgars Rinkovich said in an interview with the Associated Press that it is important to actually fight for international peace and peace in Europe. Because if we stop Russia in Ukraine, then Russia is not going to be able to challenge other countries. He pointed to the disruptive role that Russia's Wagner mercenary group is playing in Africa and to Russian meetings with officials from Hamas. The Gaza Strip's ruling militants, whose surprise attack in Israel on October 7th killed some 1,200 people. In July, Rinkovich was sworn in as president of Latvia which was part of the Soviet Union until its breakup in August 1991. The Baltic nation, population 1.9 million in 2004, joined both the European Union and NATO, holding a key point on their eastern flank with its 214-kilometer, 133-mile border with Russia. Rinkovich, who was Latvia's foreign minister for 13 years before being elected president, said that despite some members of the 27-nation EU having their opinions, at the end of the day, the alliance has agreed on sanctioning Russia and on providing more support to Ukraine over Russia's February 2022 invasion. Interestingly enough, at this point, the EU is more divided when it comes to the Middle East rather than to Ukraine, he said in Thursday's interview. He said it is important for the West to support both Ukraine and Israel against attacks on our values and the international order. He also stressed the need to push for humanitarian pauses in the Gaza, fighting to provide assistance to Palestinian civilians, whose death toll in Israel's retaliation for the Hamas attack has topped 11,000, according to the Gaza Health Ministry.
Rinkovic said Iran is very pleased to see this kind of development in the Middle East and pointed to Tehran's supply of arms and other equipment to Russia for its fight in Ukraine. It's in NATO's security interests that both cases are viewed the same way, he said. I do believe also that it will be much easier for us to keep peace in Europe if Ukraine succeeds rather than we let Ukraine down, or for that matter, also to let the situation in the Middle East to get out of control. Rinkovic said Ukrainian soldiers are fighting in a very brave way, and the West has the responsibility to respond to President Volodymyr Zelensky's appeal for more weapons, because we have not provided as much as we should have. He said Russia is mobilizing its economy, resources, and military machinery for a very long war. It tried to win the war quickly and realized it can't. And now Moscow wants to strangle Ukraine, he said, predicting it will reprise attacks on Ukraine's energy infrastructure in the coming months, as it did last winter. Rinkovic said the EU and NATO need to prepare for a long war in Ukraine. The EU has realized that we need more defense and military, he said, and at this point, I would love to see that this is going to be a bit faster process. But still, those things are now finally moving. But many European members of NATO still need to reach the target of spending 2% of GDP on defense, he said, adding that Latvia expects to spend 2.4% of GDP on defense next year and 3% in 2027. Europe's defense industrial production needs to be increased, he added. Many experts and officials have said Russian President Vladimir Putin's hope is to outlast Western support for Ukraine in a long war. I think this is very important that he fails, Rinkovic said. If the world sees that Europe and the United States are failing to provide support to Ukraine, he said, then I think that is going to be increasing pressure on Israel. Also, I think that Iran is going to be more assertive, he said. Let's also not forget about the whole Asia region and let's not forget about Taiwan. The Latvian leader said Russia is turning from an autocracy to a totalitarian regime and resorting to propaganda worse than the Cold War. They are showing brutal pictures or video or animation videos about destroying cities in Europe or the United States using nuclear weapons, saying that the use of nuclear weapons is actually just a piece of cake, he said. They are calling Ukrainians kind of a lower human race. It's very much resembling what Nazi Germany was saying about the Jews, he added. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe. Also, if you want to support Warthog Defense, please become our member and get early access to new videos, exclusive members only videos, and become administrator in comment section. The membership link is in the description. Rescues. Every day we had a guy last week at six rescues in six days. You know, he's doing the job every day.